welcome to Adobe Illustrator. I love this app. If you're not familiar with it, it is a computer graphic arts app that people use to create all kinds of illustrations, but it is also a very popular app for creating computer-aided design images for laser cutting. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna open Adobe Illustrator. My version is CS 5.1, which is quite old, but it will work for any version as this is an introduction. Now, when I opened Illustrator, you notice I've got a bunch of windows around the side of the screen, but nothing in the middle. My students often think that this means the app is broken or that it doesn't work. Actually, it's working perfectly fine. Unlike Pages or Word or uh, PowerPoint, Illustrator doesn't know what size of an image you want to create. You have to tell it that before you can do anything. So let's make a new file by going to the menu bar that says File and going to the first option, New. And there's a couple things we need to pay attention to here. First is the size. What size do you want? There's a bunch of presets, international paper, and then um, US sizes like letter and legal. I'm just gonna leave it on A4, it's pretty standard. And you can see the height and the width here measured in millimeters. You can change that to a number of different measurements but for design, you probably want to leave it in millimeters or centimeters, but millimeters is much preferred. So make sure your preset right now, your units, is set to millimeters. Under Advanced, down below, make sure your color mode is set to CMYK, although that really also doesn't matter much for computer-aided design right now. Give this document a name. I'm just going to give it my name, Joel, and press OK. Now. Voila, we have a document to work with. Now, before I start to explain what Illustrator is, I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop and give you an understanding of the differences. A Little bit of background. Most people have used some kind of a painting program like Photoshop or Paint on Windows or something similar, even on your iPhone or iPad, you probably painted something. And that's what Photoshop does. It paints by applying dots of color that we call pixels. When you draw something and zoom in, you can see those pixels. So I'm gonna paint something else with different colors and different style of brushes, and you can really see the pixels there begin to pop up all over the screen. Here, there we go, voila. So these are pixels, one square dot of color, and as you zoom out, they all blend together, and if you zoom far enough out, it looks nice and smooth. Now this is true, for any digital picture, whether it's a photograph or um, something you took on your phone, even a movie or a video. When you open those in Photoshop, you can zoom in and see those little pixels, right? And you create images by changing the colors of these pixels. So if I don't like this in blue, that's okay. This is the magic of Photoshop. I can change this to whatever I want. Ooh, that's kind of pretty right there. I prefer purples. All right, and so there it is blue, now it's purple. Okay, let's back up just a little bit. You saw me draw my name here using a paintbrush. Well, watch this, I'm gonna do it again. Ooh. Okay, when I let go of the mouse, it stays, I get exactly what I see, and we can see how bad this is. And, and when I zoom in, of course, it, it gets what we call pixelated. Now, let's compare that. Adobe Illustrator also has a brush tool. And when I draw with the brush tool, let's give my whole name this time. Watch what happens when I let go. Poof. Magically, it all smoothed out. Adobe Illustrator likes to curve things around because it's not working with pixels. In fact, if I zoom in all the way, notice there's no loss in quality. Whereas compared to Photoshop, ew. So what's happening? Well, Illustrator is not a painting program. Photoshop is, you paint. Illustrator is a drawing program. And what that means is that Illustrator, when you draw something, it's using the power of math to create something called a path. What is a path? Well, let's zoom way in. This blue line is a path. That is actually about where I drew with the brush tool a second ago. And what Illustrator does is it defines a mathematical formula that creates this line, this path, and then it applies some characteristics to it. 
So for example, right here, these two tools, this is called the fill and the stroke. The stroke is an outline and I can change the color of the stroke down below it with the color, a gradient, or none. If I hit none, that stroke just goes away. And I also have no fill, which means if I click off, it's invisible. It just goes away. It's still there, it's just invisible. So let's add the stroke back. Click on stroke, click on color, and let's double click on the fill, or the, the stroke color here. That should open a palette like this one. And this will allow you to change the color to whatever you want. These are your CMYK settings here. Up at the top, you have an options toolbar with more, well, options, and they allow you to change things like the size of the stroke, the style of the stroke, and a bunch of other things. All you need to worry about right now is that this is a fill, this is an outline or a stroke, this is a solid color, a gradient, which is a blending, and then none, okay? To change the colors, you double click on any one of them. Now let's back up a little bit. Let's back up. How do we create artwork in Illustrator? Well, to do that, we first need to understand the world we're working in here. Okay, so this little area here, we're gonna call this the toolbox, and it has a lot of tools. In fact, every tool with a little black arrow in the corner has more tools underneath it. If you click and drag your mouse to the right, it will open up a window showing more tools underneath them. So there are a lot of tools in Illustrator, also in Photoshop. We have the menu bar across the top, so menu bar and toolbox. I'm going to call this the options bar, although I do believe it is technically called the control. Let's see, yep, there it goes, control. So control or options bar. On the right, we have a lot of what are called palettes. These are windows with tons of options. I prefer to keep mine collapsed like this and only use them when needed. Today's objective is to learn about the following tools. The select tool, the direct select tool, the shapes tool, the pen tool, the fill tool, and the stroke tool. Now I've already shown you two of these. This is the fill, this is the stroke. So let's talk about the shapes tool. Underneath the T for text, we have a rectangle. Watch this, if I click and drag, I have a rectangle. If I click and drag again, I can make as many of these as I want. And right now you see they're all orange and there's no filling to them. Well, if I were to change the color, maybe I double click on the stroke or the, the, the color option, again, I get this little window, I can change it, it's green. In the control up here, I can change the size of it. How do I change these others? Because if I click, I just keep getting more rectangles. Well, that takes us to the select tool up here. The letter V on the keyboard gives you the select tool. This allows you to select or move or resize or rotate any object on your canvas. So I can select one of these rectangles, move it and resize it. If I wanted to change the color again, double click the, the color option for the stroke tool, make sure it's in front and change your color. But what if I wanna fill it? Well, then you have to click on the fill tool, which is this box over here. In Photoshop, it's called the foreground background. They're very different. And if I click on a color I want, I get that color filled in with whatever I have chosen over here. Okay, I'm gonna erase all of that now. So back to that shapes tool. We have a rectangle and underneath it, we have a rounded rectangle. Underneath that, we have an ellipse tool, which draws circles and ellipses. Underneath that, we have a polygon tool, which is a little more complicated, but I'll get to it later. And then we have some others. We have a star tool, and then one I want you to avoid right now, which means you're gonna click on it, please don't, because depending on the power of your computer, it can do some crazy things and slow you way down. All right, you're probably going, whoa, what was that? Yes, I know, don't play with it. Okay, so I'm gonna draw Pac-Man. And I'm gonna do that starting with an ellipse. And then, uh-oh, I need to cut out a mouth here. Huh, all right. Well, notice what we have here. We have a circle, okay? We have a circle that is defined by a path and four what we call anchors. Let's zoom in on this and you'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm zooming in, doot, 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 doot. There's the path inside. 
and there is an anchor. Every path is defined by two or more anchors. And we have a really, really cool tool in Illustrator. It's also in Keynote, it's also in Pages, it's also in PowerPoint, it's in a lot of tool or apps, but here it's really, really, really useful. It's called the Pen Tool. It's over here next to the T on the left. The Pen Tool, when you click on it, everywhere you click on your canvas, it creates an anchor. And as you click more anchors, they get connected to create paths. To fill in a shape, you go back to the beginning point where you started. So a simple triangle would be four clicks, three for the corners and one to complete it at the end. Right? Okay, so I said I wanted to make Pac-Man. So to do that, I have to draw a triangle where the mouth would be. And right now you're saying, hey, Mr. Sutton, you didn't draw a Pac-Man, you drew a fish or something weird, right? Because here's a path and there's a series of paths and together they don't make anything cool. Well, actually they do. The way we often build things in Illustrator is kind of using one shape to combine with another shape or subtract, cut away the other shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this circle I'm going to take the triangle I drew with, again, the pin tool up here, and I'm going to use the select tool to select them both, and I'm going to cut the triangle out of the circle. How do I do that? This is going to be our first palette that we're going to look at besides colors. You may not have it open here, so I'm going to show you where to find it. All palettes can be found under the window menu up here. Window and then you scroll down and these are different palettes. What we want is called the Pathfinder. This is gonna be your best friend. So Pathfinder, when we open it, gives us this window right here. The Pathfinder allows us to unite or combine two or more shapes together, subtract whatever shape is in the front from the one behind it, and some other stuff. Ignore those for now. So if I hit combine or unite, I get kind of a fish. Let's undo that. If I press minus, it will cut the triangle out of the circle. Voila, we have Pac-Man. Ha 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 ha. Let's try this again and let's make, I don't know, a stick figure. So here we go, ellipse tool. Again, that's under the rectangle, draw a little head. Now I'm gonna draw a body. So I'm going to draw a rectangle on top of it. I'm going to draw a rectangle for a leg. With the select tool, I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna copy and paste it. So I have two of these now, and I'm just gonna move these over here together. I'm gonna copy and paste one more, and with this one, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to make an arm. There we go, and I'll make it a little shorter. Okay, I'm gonna stack that one there, copy and paste it. I'm gonna move this to the other side, and I'm gonna rotate it again, opposite direction, move it on top of the person, and then I'm gonna select all of them, and I'm gonna press Unite. And voila, we have the outline of a stick figure, person, thing. Ah. So that is basically how Adobe Illustrator works at the very most basic level. What you do is you create anchors that two or more work together to define paths. Paths have characteristics such as a fill color, a gradient or a stroke which is an outline and the outline stroke can be any color just like the fill and it can be any size okay so shapes pen tool click to add an anchor click again to create a line click a third time to create two lines back to the beginning you get a triangle or make anything you want with it how do you stop clicking if you can't find your original point? Press the escape key on your keyboard or change tools. When you change tools, it will stop drawing. How do you combine two or more shapes? Use the select tool, overlap them, select them both, unite them, or subtract them to cut away. How do you change the color? Select your tool with the select tool Click on the fill color and then choose the, the solid color or the gradient color you want. How do you change the stroke outline? Select your shape, click on the stroke tool, click the color you want, double click, 
or no outline, or in the control option bar up top, change the size of the stroke to whatever you want. All right, now there is one other tool I want to talk about, and it's the other arrow right next to the select tool, which is a black arrow. It's a white arrow called the direct select. This tool is crazy cool and a little tricky. Select again allows us to select, to move, to resize, and to rotate. Direct select does something similar, except instead of grabbing just the entire shape, it's selecting the anchors. So if I get the direct select, I can then click on or double click an anchor and move that to redefine the shape that I have just drawn. This allows you to customize an, uh, any shape into an infinite number of possibilities. All right, this has been an absolute brief crash course in Adobe Illustrator. So your job is to take the tutorials posted on ManageBack and work your way through the first one. It's called the Crayon Box. And then if you have completed that, I want you next to try the, which one is it? The Ghost Tutorial. And if you've completed that one, then I want you to try any one of the other cartoon character tutorials that I've posted. If you have questions, of course, email me and I will answer as soon as possible.